Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. If you've been following the channel, you know I've kind of taken a little hiatus from creating content and I apologize for that. Got over COVID, holidays were crazy, uh, you know, work was super busy, all good things, but, um, uh, you know, I apologize for not making content that regularly. If you are brand new, welcome to the channel. Check out a few of the other playlists that I have. Uh, we've really covered a lot of good stuff over the last year, and I plan to continue that here in this series. As you can see here, uh, I've built just a very small app. Actually, I've done nothing but file new project, uh, and it has something to do with how to, right? We're going to go back to some basics here. We're going to create a screen that will allow us to basically kick off all these different things we're going to learn something from navigating from screen to screen, loading uh, images over the network, passing data between screens, all that good stuff. There's, there's a lot, a lot, a lot to come. So um, if you are brand new and you are interested in that, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out. All the code will be available on GitHub here. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, we have a simple main activity here and we have uh, a very simple layout here that just has a text view. So what we're actually going to do, I'm just going to change this to be a button really quickly. Sure, we'll use the app compat button. Uh, hello world. Uh, I guess we could leave it as hello world. That, that's fine. <clears throat> if we go ahead and rerun this here, there should really be no changes to our code here. Uh, and uh, other than having this new UI element, and now we can click it and, and start to move something along here. So inside of an activity here, pretty popular thing that we want to do is gain a reference to our UI elements, right? And for instance, this button, and in particular, we're going to want to do something when the user clicks this button. So we can very easily define a variable here called uh, button. I'm sure, it'll be of type button. And we're going to set it equal to the find view by ID, r.id.button. And this is going to resolve to nothing here. You might be wondering, where'd you come up with the ID button? Well, we're going to simply go ahead and copy that, bounce over to our layout file here, and we're going to assign an attribute called ID to this particular button. And so now we've gone ahead and given this UI element a particular ID that now we can make use of. If we bounce back to our activity, the IDE no longer is freaking out. It says, hey, I can resolve this button. And specifically, even if you control click or command click on Mac, uh, it will bring you to the relevant location inside of this layout file um, that this activity is tethered to. So very simply here, we're going to, as I said, a set on uh, click listener here. And we're just going to I believe we could just call print line, which is convenient. And we will say hello from the click. And so when we run it here, I just want to open up our run tab just so that we can see it. Um, and then if we go ahead and click our particular button here, we can actually see the uh, output here, hello from our click. So we are appropriately attaching an on-click listener here to this button, and now we are going to navigate from one screen to the next, right? Because the goal of this uh, primary screen, I guess, let's say, is just going to have a bunch of different buttons or a bunch of different places that the user can click on, and that will navigate us to an activity that will then uh, you know, do something specific as far as all these different how-tos. I don't want to spin up a new project for every single uh, little tutorial that we do here. So we're just going to have one, you know, master branching screen. It's going to be uh, implemented as an activity and it's just going to navigate to other activities here. So this is a pretty common task, right? Android activities can be seen as screens inside of your app. And a lot of times you want to navigate to some other screen in the app, right? You want to move from one screen to the next when the user clicks on something. Maybe there's a list of information. They click on one. They go to the detail view of whatever item they clicked on. So it's an extremely popular task here. And let's go ahead and, uh, and just implement that. So we're going to go ahead and just click on the same package here. We will create a new uh, Kotlin file here. And we're simply going to name this here Simple Data Display Activity. Uh, we'll leave it as a class, that's fine. And as you notice here, I'm going to go ahead and right click and say split right. Now you can have multiple views 
uh, or multiple pages, um, I guess, sorry, files open at the same time. We'll see here that there's this little syntax for colon and then app compat activity. We're gonna go ahead and just copy that really quickly. And if you are not familiar with this, uh, A, I definitely recommend checking out other content in uh, on the channel here. We, we kind of discuss a bunch of this stuff, but basically this is the syntax for extends inside of Kotlin. And then we are extending our app compat activity, which if we control click into is, uh, you know, an Android X uh, component here that eventually extends fragment activity. It'll go all the way down to activity. Uh, but this is basically the touch point for us as far as what we're going to uh, extend here in our implementation. So we are going to override our on create and not the one that has two parameters there that you can see in the little, uh, the little window that pops up, but instead just the one here. And we're basically going to copy this exact thing that's over here we'll rename this file to uh, activity simple data display, uh, you know, just to kind of match the class name here. And obviously we are uh, not going to resolve this layout file because we have not created it yet. So uh, one thing I like to do is just, you can navigate around by, you know, double clicking on this top bar that's up here. If this side panel is closed, uh, it's pretty convenient to kind of navigate into exactly what package you need to. Uh, but more specifically for layout files, you can actually just actually any file, but it's helpful for layout files. Uh, you could just go ahead and right click on the package and then you can just pop something in there uh, to create a new file. It just helps you don't have to open the windows every single time. And so we pasted in the name here and we are going to leave the constraint layout as is. Uh, then we can go ahead and split this. Yeah, you know, now it starts to get a little unfortunate here um, because we're running out of screen real estate, but we're gonna copy this button here, and instead of a button, we are uh, going to change it again to be uh, a text view. Uh, we will name this just text view here. Uh, I guess realistically it should be attached to this side because that is the activity that it is a part of here. Uh, so we have our layout here. It says, hello world. Uh, we'll leave that as is because we're going to want to change that and I'll show you that it is working. And then otherwise, if we bounce back to our code, we can very simply uh, see that everything is resolved again. So, so that's fantastic. Um, a pretty common thing, right? So we're going to navigate from this main activity into this secondary activity. A pretty common thing here is wanting to pass some information between these two screens. Um, so we can do that via the intent. And so if you just start typing intent here, uh, you can actually get a reference to the intent that created or started this activity. And if you're not familiar with intents, intents are the way that we communicate from, uh, communicate to the system from one activity to the next, telling it, hey, you know, we want to start this new activity. Uh, and here are some optional pieces of information. So we can say intent dot uh, get string extra, and then we need a name here. So I'm just gonna name this data, um, and, and you'll see where this comes from in a little bit. So ideally this should return something uh, for us that's inside of this bundle here. However, if we control click in, uh, it is possible, you see here that it is annotated at nullable and basically saying if the extras, if like the, the bundle uh, that created this intent is null, then we pass in null, otherwise, we um, we try to fetch a particular string by its name, you know, basically try to get something by its key. Uh, and then that is also a nullable operation if we don't have information in the bundle that has the key data. Uh, so what I want to do here is let's call this data to display. And realistically, we want this to be of type string, right? Because we want to fetch a string from somewhere and, and then eventually display it. However, as we can see here, it says found a uh, nullable string and it is required just a regular string here. If we go ahead and put a question mark there, this will all go away. However, I think a safer approach would be here to just use our handy dandy um, Elvis operator and then we pass in a particular string here, right? So this basically, this syntax here, if you tilt your head to the left, it does look like Elvis's eyes and his hair and that's where the name comes from. And uh, basically it means that if this value, if this expression on the left-hand side of this operator is null, then go ahead and use this instead, 
right? So it's kind of compounding if you're used to Java, you know, if this field is null, then, you know, set it to this or, or change it around or whatever the case is. Uh, this is just kind of a nicer way of doing that. So uh, it is called the Elvis operator and it is super handy. Uh, sorry, I think I need to change this. Oh, we did change it to text view here. So then we have our data from the bundle that basically started this intent. And then from here, we are going to say our text view is an Android widget text view. We are going to find it by the ID of text view right here. And then we're simply going to say text view dot text equals data to display, All right? Uh, so this activity here is all set up. We are all ready to receive some information uh, or, or at least this activity is ready to be started. It will try to parse some information from whoever created it, whoever started it, and then we're gonna go ahead and display it here. So if we bounce back over to our main activity, we can see that this on click listener is kind of where we want to, you know, move the user from one screen to the next. So as I mentioned, we have to use something called an intent here. And once I import it, and in particular here, we are going to be looking at the second to last constructor here where we require a context and then a class that we are trying to move to. So we can say this because we are inside of an activity and then we will simply uh, reference the actual class that we're trying to move to here. Uh, and this is obviously the same name here as this. And then this little colon colon class dot Java is just the Kotlin appropriate uh, way to reference that class. Then we can do something called start activity and we will pass in a particular intent. Wonderful. Uh, however, we are not actually giving this intent any information here, right? In inside here, we are trying to get a particular string that is named data here. We're trying to get the value behind that. Uh, and then, you know, obviously we have this null handling. So at the moment, there's no way that data is in there. The intent does not contain that information. So we will always result in this no data uh, being displayed to the user. So we can change that by saying uh, intent dot put extra. And then in here, we can see that it's basically like a key value pairing. So we will say data, and then we can say hello from main act activity, right? Obviously, this is kind of a silly example, but uh, going back to that example of if there was a list of data that the user was uh, looking at, and then they click on a particular item, a lot of times you can pass that item's ID to the details screen, and then the details basically fetches that item by its ID and then displays all of it. So here we are, we have our button, our on click listener, we've created our intent, and we should bounce over here to our simple data display activity. So if we go ahead and click this button, um, the app crashes. And if we take a look at our run tab here, we can actually see uh, the stack trace here of what has happened. We can see that there is specifically uh, an activity not found exception, and it says that it's unable to find this activity and asked if you've declared the activity in your Android manifest. Uh, this is something that we do not do, and this is, I guess, a nice little segue into the Android manifest. Ooh, I did not like how that opened it completely, but inside of this manifest folder, uh, if you're looking at the project structure under the Android, you can get into the uh, Android manifest file. And in here, this is high level uh, configuration about your application. And specifically here, uh, you know, here's the actual data about some application info. And then here is an activity that's already declared. As we can see here, it is the main activity. We have this attribute exported true, meaning that this activity can be started from other apps outside of this application itself which is helpful. And then there's this special little intent filter. I don't want to dive too deep into it, but all you need to know is that this intent filter is basically what tells the system, you know, when you click uh, this little home icon, that the main activity is the one to launch here. That is why it has the name main and uh, also the category launcher there. So very simply here, what we need to do is we need to just declare our secondary activity. Once you kind of hit enter going through this, it, uh, you know, kind of does it for you. So we can just simply call uh, this one here and we now have added this secondary activity into our Android manifest. 
giving it a run here should yield exactly what we were expecting, where if we click this button here, we move to a secondary activity. You can see a little bit of an animation happen. You can see here the hello from main activity. And then if we were to click the back button, you can actually see us go into the back stack there. And if we click the back button again, obviously there's nothing more, so the application closes. Uh, very quickly, if we were to rename this key to just data2, but this guy is still on the other end of the, uh, uh, the, the other activity is still trying to look for data, we can actually see that we resulted in the no data state because we did not find anything in that intent that had the key data. So I'm gonna keep it here. This is actually my first video that I've created on my new computer. So I do apologize if some of the audio is uh, either off or, or too loud or whatever. I'm trying to tweak things as we go here. Uh, but I do appreciate you making it this far in the video. If you have not already, please consider subscribing. There will be plenty more information like this that we are going to build out. Basically this entire sample app with just a bunch of different things that are, you know, how to's, little tutorials on how to do everything, working with third party libraries, you name it. We're going to go through all of it uh, here and then we'll probably get back into maybe some kind of more of an actual uh, application that we go ahead and build out again. I have some ideas brewing. So thank you for making it this far in the video. If you have, please consider giving a thumbs up. It'll help the algorithm out. It'll help push up this content out to more. Again, the video description and the um, playlist description should have the GitHub repo that this is going to be available on. So check it out there uh, if you actually want to see the code for yourself. And otherwise, thank you guys for checking in. I'll catch you in the next one.